All right, <clears throat> so we just got the first prototype cuts of the frame in the mail. Uh, I've been working on a mock-up on the 3D printed version. I was just about to finish this guy up, but just got special delivery from USPS. Uh, so we're gonna open this up. This is the first look at the Raggio frame. Ooh, Larry's got some micros in here, of course. All right, we got one frame kit. The Amazon's are thick. All right, looks like we got some Banny UK stuff. Nice. Banny arms. Right on, right on. All right, so we got the top bottom plate. Got the arm supports. Two, three. All right, so we got the arms. These are six mil thick, 10 mil wide. And the cuts look really nice. All right, let's take a look here. We got the top plate. This is the bottom plate. All countersunk screws. Raggio cutout looks awesome on the bottom. And then we got the top plate with the countersunk screws as well and the Raggio cutout. Looks really good. Nice and stiff. And then this is gonna be for our, our uh, GoPro mount. And like that, we're gonna put some press nuts into that guy. So let's see. So these are for the arm support. So we're gonna, essentially it's gonna look like so. It's pretty good. Just gonna sit like that. All right. So there she is. Six mil arms, ten mil wide. We get the name cut out on the top plate. Raggio carbon fiber looks nice and good. The cutouts are really clean. Oh yeah. All right, so we got our TBS uh, Elite <coughs> bundle. Comes uh, stacked like this. So you, all you have to do is put the FC, or the, sorry, the PDB in between the uh, VTX and then put the flight control on top of that. And basically it's got these pins here that, that slide into place. The PDB slides over the pins and then the pins connect into the flight controller. The only thing you have to do is <clears throat> which isn't very obvious and there's not really any instructions on it is solder these four holes here so you want to make sure the solder comes through and touches the PDB and that's basically how your signal uh, from the ESCs gets to the flight controller so just drop some solder in these four holes here and make sure they go all the way through the PDB and then that's going to allow you to just solder the signal wires from your ESCs onto here and not have to run them all the way over here so this is kind of a big pain in the butt and TBS is really bad about making instructions. So I had to um, hit up my buddy Ricky Martinez who flies TBS gear and does a lot of long range flying and basically ask him how the hell do you wire this thing up to run Crossfire and GPS. So we have the TBS GPS compass from getfpv.com. We have the Crossfire Micro RX from getfpv.com as well and we have the TBS Elite bundle from getfpv.com. Um, pretty much your long range warehouse, as far as I'm concerned, getfpv has everything you need for these kind of builds. Um, and hopefully they'll be carrying my frame soon. So <clears throat> we're gonna need to make a harness, a BST harness. You can see on the back of the Crossfire you have your BST plug. A lot of people might be wondering what that's actually for because you never really use it um, when you're running Crossfire on your quad. But we're gonna need to make a harness to um, from the Crossfire to the GPS and then from there into the flight controller, into the side here. So we're gonna connect like that basically. 
And that's going to allow us to control the FPV vision, which is um, TBS's OSD, uh, with the Crossfire and do all the configurations and that kind of stuff, and also have the GPS working. Um, for the Crossfire, we're only going to need the ground, the 5 volt, and channel 1. We're not going to need smart audio because we're not using um, the Betaflight OSC. We're using the TBS FPV vision. So all we need are these three wires here. Let's see, one two, three, and then these are gonna, I'm gonna solder these to this cable that comes with the flight controller. It's got a, a, a white, a black, and a red. Those are gonna plug in to the RX on the flight controller, like so. White cable on the left, red on the right. All right, so that's gonna connect to our ground, 5 volt, and channel 1 on the Crossfire Micro RX. So if we grab our frame and kind of start measuring this stuff out. So flight controller is going to sit right in the middle here. Um, <coughs> Crossfire is going to be up front here like that. So we need to make sure that this cable reaches to this cable. So we can either run it around the side here, probably do it like that. Um, let's see, yeah, that'll work. All right, so we don't need it super long, so we'll just clip it right about there. All right. And then if we have too much uh, length on the wire, we can always just twist it up to keep it tidy. So we'll go ahead and trim the tips off. We'll do this part first, because this is going to be the easiest part, and then we'll go on to the harder part, which is going to be making a harness, bridging the GPS, and the crossfire. Um, let's see. OK, so let's make sure we got the wiring correct. So we'll take our RX. So the ground is going to be this guy. So we'll do that one first, keep them separate. And then we'll take the ground from this guy. Just unplug that. And we'll grab our iron. And then we'll connect these. Okay, that's our ground. And then the next one's going to be our 5 volt, the next one in. So we'll take our red wire. Okay. And then we'll take our signal. That's going to be our S bus. That's going to be the white wire going into the FC. All right. So that's the first part of the harness done. So we'll go ahead and shrink this up. And then we'll come back and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so now we're going to connect the BST from the crossfire to the GPS. So we're going to work from right to left. Um, this is going to be cable number one on the right side here. And then on the GPS, that's going to connect to the cable on the left, like that. So let's go ahead and do this first one. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna include a diagram in the video as well, uh, which you guys should see pop up. Otherwise, you're gonna have no idea what I'm doing here. Maybe uh, TBS can use the diagram for their website. All right, so we'll take just go one at a time so we stay in order. Let's 
And then I think we'll take our really small heat shrink, should work. Okay. And then we'll just make sure that these solder joints are really clean. the heat shrink around that one. Ugh, perfect. And then we'll shrink that up with the iron. All right, one down. And you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to connect the third wire, which is off of this, the flight controller. So let's see. Go ahead and trim these off. Okay, so we're going to take the one, the cable closest to the back, put these out of the way, and that's going to connect to these guys that I already soldered. So we're going to have to get this heat shrink off very carefully. this up okay and then we'll bridge these two Definitely want to use helping hands on this part if you got them. This is going to be a nightmare. Okay. Then we'll take, we're going to need some thicker heat shrinks, so we'll use some of this guy. This doesn't come apart. All right, that looks okay. So let's we'll pinch that together and then we'll shrink that up. All right, so that's one, one down. Like I said, this is gonna be a pain in the ass. All right, so we join these two guys with the GPS and then we're just gonna cover that up and then we'll shrink that heat shrink. All right, so we got three more to go. Um, I will skip ahead in the video and um, finish this up and then join back up with you guys when this is all done. And like I said, I'll attach the uh, diagram to help you guys out. All right, we are back. All right, so we have our harness done. Hopefully yours looks like this when you have it all ready to go. So we have the wires coming from the BST on the GPS split going into the BST on the crossfire 
And then also going into the BST that connects to the flight controller. So you should have a BST that can plug right into the flight controller. It's going to go on the side there, like so. And then we have our harness for our crossfire control going into the RX plug on the back right of the flight controller. That's going to have your 5 volt, your ground, and your signal. And that's going to plug in <coughs> to the top of the crossfire. So that's your harness. Hopefully you guys weren't hoping to do a clean build <laughs> on your long range rig because it's going to be tricky with all these wiring harnesses. But let's see how it looks. FC is going to sit there. Crossfire is going to come around the front here, like so. And then our GPS is going to sit on top of the GoPro mount. This actually doesn't look that bad. So we'll just tuck these wires in, maybe twist them up. Crossfire is going to sit up front here. And then um, what we'll probably do is twist this up and then we're going to stick this guy on top of the GoPro mount like that. All right. So I think at this point we can plug this in and see if we have lights on everything. So we got my smoke stopper and I'm going to be using a 3S battery and we'll plug this guy in. Okay. Crossfire RX is on. GPS has blue light. So I think we're good to go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, start putting the frame together and then we'll get all the components in there like the ESCs, the motors, and then we'll solder them up to the PDB. All right, so to mount our flight controller stack, it's got these two screw holes that we're gonna screw nylon screws into. These other two screws keep the uh, this little plastic plate on there. Um, so I suppose we could take those out and screw in nylon screws to all four. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put double sided tape on this plastic part and then secure it down <coughs> with the two screws. So that should be enough to hold it on there nice and secure. So I just want to make sure we don't cover up the screw holes. Couple couple layers on there. And this should also give it a little bit of vibration dampening. And we're gonna just make sure we got this lined up with the screw holes <coughs> before we stick it down permanently. on there pretty good. <clears throat> it's not going anywhere. Cool, so we got the FC on there. You can see there's a gap in between the PDB and the frame here, so that's not a worry right there. Uh, we can still access the VTX button on the side here, and then we will be able to access the USB as well. So, um, we'll go ahead and get the other, arm on, other arms on on this side, and then we'll get this stuff placed down. That. All right, let's get these other arms on. So these arm brackets have press nuts in them, so you don't need nuts or anything. You just screw it up from the bottom, 
and then that'll secure the arm in place. So let's take our countersunk screws, these guys here, and then we'll just come up from the bottom, and then we'll tighten that one down. Alright, let's get a better camera angle here. Countersink screw. <clears throat> and then we can tighten down the whole right side here. So. All right. So our crossfire is going to chill right in here. And we'll just have to make some room for these wires. <laughs> right in front there. Alright, so for the powertrain for this frame, we're going to be using the T-Motor F40 Pro 2s. Um, these are 1600 kV, super low kV. We're going to run in 6S on this build. And for ESCs, we're using the T Motor F30 from getfpv.com. These can run up to 6S. These are the V2s. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, I already got these wired up. We're going to go ahead and put some heat shrink on the arms and uh, get these soldered up to the PDB stack. And then we're going to screw the motors onto the arms. All right, so we're actually going to have to take the arm off, which is okay. It's really easy to do. I'm just going to unplug this for now. Oops. There we go. All right, so we'll take the front arm off so we can get the heat shrink on. shrink over the arm and then we can screw that back on all right and then we'll thread our ESC through the heat shrink like so and then we're gonna need so this these arms are six mil thick so we're probably gonna need some eight to ten mil m3 screws let me grab some of those let's see if eight mil will do it yeah, 8 mil looks good. Alright, so we'll take four of those. Take a Loctite. All right, so now we can solder this on to the PDB here. So the PDB has a positive and negative and your signal for the ESC. So we'll go ahead and put the negative on first. And then we'll take the negative from the um, ESC signal and we'll just solder that onto the negative pad on the PDB. So we'll put the signal on first. That's the white wire. It's going to go right in the middle here. Oops. Look something like that. And then we'll put some double sided tape underneath the ESC so it's not touching the carbon. And then we'll shrink this up on top of it. Then we'll do that for all four arms and then we'll come back. 
All right, so now we have our two front motors on and ESCs. We have them heat shrunk to the arms. And then I threw some LEDs on the bottom. We're gonna connect these to a 12 volt regulator later on in the build. <coughs> At this point, I wanna show you guys the camera mount. So we have a little turret that goes underneath the frame that fits your run cam or your Fox Ear micros. And just screw this. So this is 3D printed out of nylon. It's gonna be really solid. It'll take a beating. Um, it's got three mounting screws. You're just gonna use some M3 by um, probably 16 mil, should be good. And um, those screw in through these three holes on the bottom and they're gonna sit flush in the nylon. And then those are gonna come up through the bottom plate here, like so. But before you do that, you wanna thread your plug, which fits through these slots that are actually made for that out the top and then that's going to plug into our flight control into the FPV vision. So once we have those screws in place, we got this really cool design that Larry came up with. It's basically a carbon plate with press nuts pressed into it. That's going to sit on top of the GoPro mount and basically sandwich the GoPro mount bottom part, this TPU, in between this plate and the frame. So your GoPro mount's not going anywhere, it's gonna be super solid and uh, no jello. So that's, I've never seen that before in a frame design. Larry came up with this for this frame and um, it should work great. It's nice and neat, lines up with the TPU mount and it's got your three holes to mount the screws through. So we're gonna get that situated at this point in the build. So we'll just line up the screws and then we'll start threading those through. And then it should catch those press nuts and then you know you're good to go. So get the back one in. One's caught. Then we'll get the left side. And you'll see the screws start coming through the press nut, and that's when you know you have a good seal. That nice and tight. So that's going to hold our camera in place and our GoPro in place, those three screws. So get the back one down tight. Alright, so that's our camera mount, FPV camera mount, and the GoPro mount. So now all we need to do is plug in our FPV camera to this Cam 1 port on the front of the Calibri. So we'll get that on there. Let's see, pins on top. Yep. I'm sorry, that's <laughs> it's gonna go onto the FPV vision, which is underneath here. So I'll get some tweezers out and put that in there. Like so. So that's again, that's gonna go into the FPV vision underneath the flight controller on the left side, cam one. All right, so now we can, um, mock up the GPS that's going to plug in here and basically sit on top of the GoPro mount. Um, so why don't we go ahead and we'll get the back arms on and um, get the motors on, the ESCs, and then I'll show you guys the landing gear that we have designed for this frame as well. Alright, so here's the landing gear that I was mentioning. So the idea behind this is to um, allow the quad to lay flat because the camera mount sticks underneath the frame, obviously. So once you have these mounted on the back arms, the quad sits flat, and they also double up as an LED mounting spot with a little groove here for your power and ground um, wires. So <clears throat> I'll show you guys how to mount one of these up. 
we'll do the let back left. So before we do that, we gotta put the heat shrink on the arm again. So we're gonna take this arm off. So, take one of our motors here, and then we'll put some double-sided tape on the ESC. And then I've, what I've been doing is just cutting off a small sliver and putting that aside for the LEDs. Because we don't need it too thick for the ESC. So I'll put this on the thicker piece on the ESC underneath. And then we'll run that through the heat shrink. And then we'll just set that in place. Alright, so we're going to need some screws a little bit longer than um, <clears throat> 8 mil just because the uh, the feet add a couple millimeter to the stack for the motor mounting. So let's see what we got in here. Just looking for some 10 mil screws. So we're only going to need three for these back motors. Do it. All right, so we have our, um, these run off a of 12 volt. Every LED on the quad runs 12 volts and we have this little regulator here, 12 volt regulator that we're gonna power all the LEDs off of. So we'll put this on first. Let's get a better angle for you guys. And we'll put it through the, through the foot and then up through the carbon arms and then that'll screw into the motor. So we'll grab our M3 driver. <laughs> All right, like that. And then we'll do the left side. Put one more screw in the top here. Just make sure that you don't crimp the LED wire. Okay, and then just tighten them all down. All right, so that's solid. We got one rear LED on. <laughs> and basically, we're gonna run this other LED up the arm and it's gonna create a bridge from um, the power source through the LED through the foot and then into the back LED here. All right, so that's one back arm. We'll do the same to the, ne um, to the right arm and then we'll start getting this thing all together. All right, so we got our LEDs on the bottom of the arms now. And I took the front two, daisy chained them, I ran the, the left one to the right, and then that one comes through through the cutouts on the bottom. And that's gonna go into this wiring harness I made that basically connects all the LED wires into one, which goes into the 12 volt regulator that fits right there. So again, on the back we have the two white LEDs, the wire is going through the mounts and then onto the back arm LEDs and then that goes through through the cutouts on the bottom again and those all meet in the middle here and I just heat shrunk the connections so they won't short on anything. So we should plug it in and they all should light up. All right, so we got white in the rear, some nice tail light effect, and then we got blue on the bottom. So that all looks good. So now what we can do is we can put the top plate on. So 
So here's our top plate. It's got the Raggio cut out on top, countersunk screws again. Uh, it's got two, two spots for two straps. So we'll grab our battery straps. So we'll just put one in for now just to show you guys how to do it. So you're basically gonna run the strap <coughs> through the slot and then under the, under the top plate and then back up through the top. And then it's basically gonna come around here and secure like that. So you're gonna need some actually some, some longer straps than what I have right here, especially because we're gonna run 6S on this guy. But I just want to give you guys an idea of how that's gonna fit. And just make sure you have enough clearance on the stack to fit your strap through there. So unfortunately I need to use um, 20 mil standoffs, which I don't have at the moment. So I'm just gonna be using some spacers to make this all fit. So. So we got the axi mount coming out the rear. Nice TPU mount for that. And then the GPS is just gonna sit right on top here. And your modal T antenna is gonna come through the GoPro mount and then just sit on top here like that. So you have the modal T right there, and then the GPS puck like so. You guys can see that. All right, so that's it. First attempt building this, not too hard. Hardest part was honestly setting up the uh, the harness for the TBS compass and for the crossfire. So now we gotta go into beta flight, make sure we get all the settings right, get the FP vision working, get the GPS working, and um, from there we'll go ahead and maiden this bad boy. All right, so to navigate the OSD menu, there's a little button on the side of the FPV vision. You're gonna hold it down to get into this menu. And then you're gonna to wanna to go to flight controller, hold down on the button, and then push it quickly, three, four, five, <laughs> get in the calibration, hold it down, hit it once, RC calibration, hold it down, go to read clean flight RC data, and then hold it down, and then that should be good to go. And then we'll just go back. So you just hold down the button down and back. Hold it down again. Hold it down again. Okay, and that's how we set up the um, flight controller. All right, so we're gonna access the OSD menu using the controller. So we're gonna hold down and left, and you'll see the countdown. And then we can navigate using the sticks. All right, so I was unable to get the um, calibration working using the RC calibration and the read clean flight RC data, um, but I was able to access the OSD menu using my sticks, so that tells me that the flight controller and the radio are communicating with each other, so we don't need to worry about that calibration. All right, so we got the GPS working. We actually had to go outside to get it working. Um, when you're outside, you should get um, four out of four satellite lock, and then you'll see uh, home point set. <clears throat> then you should see a solid blue light on the GPS when you have a satellite lock. It's uh, blinking right now because I'm indoors, but that looks like it's working now. I got the GPS coordinates on the bottom, a little home arrow on top. So the GPS looks like it's working now.